In a dark future, the world has been decimated by powerful sentinels who hunt mutants and those who aid them. The remaining mutants join the X-Men in a final attempt to prevent this war from ever happening. The consciousness of Wolverine is sent into his past self by Kitty Pride. There in the 70s, his mission is to bring Charles Xavier and Eric Lencher together to prevent an assassination that will set history upon this inevitable path of doom. However, Xavier, Lencher, Mystique, and others must battle their own troubled history and what they believe is the right course for history to take. Ultimately, their choices and actions will decide the fate of all humanity and mutant kind. So, X Men: Days of Future Past. This film it is it's it's hard it's hard to wrap my head around this movie. It is great. This movie is great. At times, this is a brilliant film. Incredible stuff in this film. This is the X Men franchise taken to entirely different realm of reality, entire different plateau, entire different, beyond anything else this franchise has ever offered you. This is beyond anything else. Usually I, I throw some thoughts around I'm in my head, leaving the theater, driving home, stuff like that, trying to get my thoughts together and everything, but there's just so much depth and substance in this movie that it's just difficult to just plunge right into it that way. So I'm going to be throwing stuff off the wall here, so try to keep up with me and my ramblings and everything. But first off, I'll jump in and say this is very much a character-centric type of film. This is very much driven by the characters that are all over this film that are portrayed magnificently by an amazingly talented cast. First off, like Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen just have... They bring so much more to these characters than they've ever brought before. And they've done some great stuff with these characters before, but this is just pushed you a higher, deeper level of emotion and sorrow. Because they're, the, they're in this bleak as living hell, no hope at all type of future, with ultimate, inevitable destruction of everything. And they have such a deep level of pathos, and there's such a bonding, so much regret between them that they spent so many years fighting that they wish they could go back and change things, and that's the whole thing of this thing that in the past that is very much centered between Eric Lencher and Charles Xavier and everything trying to mend something between them, trying to bring them back together even though there's so much junk, there's so much friction, there's so much bad stuff that's gone on between them, what happened in first class and stuff that's happened in between these two films that makes these characters so much more fleshed out, so much more dimensional, so much more deeper than they've ever been before in any portrayal whatsoever. McAvoy and Fassbender are just incredible, ta incredibly talented actors, and they show it in every single frame of this film. They carry it so very well on their shoulders because McKellen and Stewart have a certain much more limited screen time because the main focus is what's going on in the past. So McAvoy and Fassbender carry the film so marvelously, so magnificently. And Hugh Jackman does do a good job in the film, a very reliable performance from him as he's been through all the entire franchise of the X-Men does a really good job, but it is less centered on him. He's just sort of a conduit between the, that tether between the future and the past, so he's not so much the deep down uh, centric element of the story, but he's still a very vital part of it, and there's still things in the film because the character of William Stryker, who was behind the Weapon X program, he is in the film, and that causes a little bit of something here and there, and it's there's so many nice threads in this film that link everything so sort of subtly and beautifully together. It's just an amazing craftsmanship of storytelling and everything in my view that they just link all these little things with characters and everything together, future, past type of stuff. Because my thing was, when I heard about this film and they were intentionally linking the two continuities of First Class and the original films, which have a lot of continuity contradictions in them that have not been mended, I was like, this could be a complete mess of shit. It could turn into a complete disaster trying to mend all this type of stuff and trying to make it work together. And on the whole, they make it work together. They make as much work together as they can without over-explaining little bits and pieces of certain things. The main chunks, chunk of stuff between the characters, they focus on the characters, like I said, they try to mend those bridges between the two continuities in terms of the characters, but obviously it's the whole thing of trying to create a brand new continuity, change the past, change all this stuff so certain things of the past in the future do not occur. So it's a, it gets a little complicated, but I thought they handled the time travel elements of this film very, very well because they went ahead and 
question James Cameron about this type of stuff. Because he did such a great job with the first and second Terminator films with these types of concepts that they went to him, they talked to him, and got a firm grasp on, on the mechanics of storytelling with time travel. And I think they did a really good job. And I could see a little, maybe, I don't know if they were intentional, maybe they were. Little kind of types of references, sort of homages, certain things that just reminded me of the Terminator films, such as the future Sentinels can shapeshift and absorb certain things, which is very sort of T-1000-esque. But it takes his own certain identity in the film. And when Wolverine wakes up in the past, he's actually fully naked, like anyone in the Terminator films travels back in time, no clothes. So it's uh, these little things that probably were, because uh, like in X2, they did a couple little homages, a couple little parallels to Star Trek II Wrath of Khan with Jean Grey's arc in the whole film. And they do jam-pack a certain volume of characters in the film, but they keep it very much focused on the pertinent ones. Like Professor X, Magneto, Beast, Wolverine, Mystique. These are the main characters that they are focusing on and giving all the substantive screen time to. People like Storm and Bishop and Havoc. These are characters that show up for a little while. They have a little bit part in the film, but they don't have a big, long, stretched out type of substantive, kind of out of whack type of storyline that you might fear that the film would have with so many characters, but they balance it out and focus it in the correct ways. And this is a film that is a very distinct passioning of the torch from the old guard of the franchise to the brand new ones from the first class film. This is definitely a sequel mainly towards those characters and that continuity and moving that forward into their own permanent franchise. And I think it does a very good job that it builds on those characters, makes them very, very, very important. Whereas some of them in the original continuity, original franchise, weren't quite played up as such main powerful characters. But I think they did a very good job with the characters. I thought the screenplay was fantastic. I thought Brian Singer's direction is probably the best it's been in God knows how long. This is epic. X-Men films have never gotten to that real epic level and everything. Never transcended into that sort of scope and scale and just trying to do something way beyond anything else they've done before. This is the film that breaks that glass ceiling and goes for the sky and it succeeds completely. The film has completely amazing effects. Nothing's nothing's cheap in this film at all. There's all seamless, stunning effects and everything. Great display of mutant powers that they really show a lot of people at full force in this film and they do some great action sequences, especially in the future's sequences and everything. The film starts out with a great action sequence that throws you for a loop at the end of it. There's just a lot. This film handles everything in concept, in action, in story, in characters so superbly. If you want to dig deep and get some amazing, wonderfully emotional performances from McAvoy, especially, he he has a great arc in the film. He goes from this guy who's going kind of like felt like he's lost everything. He's just. He's this drunkard. He's this guy just given up on everything and everyone and himself. And he goes through this great arc in the whole film. It just it gets him to the point where he is Professor X once again. There's great scenes with him in the film that just oh they just hit deep inside, hit that emotional chord so beautifully. Especially that one scene where you got Stuart and McAvoy communicating telepathically through time. That's the key sequence of that character arc in the whole film. But Fassbender's character arc is fantastic. It's just, you can cannot predict where it's going to go from one point to another. He's a very fascinating, complex character portrayed by one of the best actors that is around today. The guy just, Fassbender just does amazing work no matter what the hell he's doing. And he's incredible in this film. Everyone just does a great job. Jennifer Lawrence does a great job as a very, probably because it is Jennifer Lawrence that they made it such a prominent vital, pivotal role in the film that she just lives up to every expectation. This film does so much great things on so many levels. It takes one of the most revered stories in the whole X-Men comic continuity and, and adapts it to the continuities that it has here and the characters that it has in the right ways. They do everything right and they really kind of live up to the spirit of that story. There's probably ten tons more substance and ten tons more stuff I could dig myself into for the next hour. I could, I, I, I can't wait to even watch other people's reviews and watch discussions about this film because this is, there is so much going on in this film and it's handled in such beautiful brushstrokes and everything. It just, this is pitch perfect every step of the way. 
there's not a critique, there's not a negative criticism I can levy against this film whatsoever. That's the thing. I've been able to criticize any other, almost any other X Men film on some level, whether it's screwing up characters, not being all that interesting, having kind of fallen short of its potential, or just being complete clusterfuck, or whatever it is. This film hits it, hits the nail right on the fucking head. That's it. X Men Days of Future Past just hits it right on the head. It's, it's epic. It's majestic. It's, it's a masterpiece. I, I just. I'm blown away by this film. I'm blown away. I can't say anything more than that. I am blown away by this movie. I didn't know what to really expect. I didn't. I never really watched First Class all that much. I could never really get too far into the film because the I just didn't like what they were doing with some of the characters. That a lot of the stuff, my problems with a lot of the X-Men films from the start is that they've got a lot of the characters wrong from the source material. Stuff like Sabretooth doesn't, re aside from appearance, doesn't match Sabretooth's personality, his backstory, anything like that. Deathstrike doesn't match anything. She was in the comics. A lot of people are underused. Cyclops, he was underused. James Marsden, Marsden is a great actor, underused completely in the franchise. So many characters that they've just not gotten the right potential, using the right potential. This film just does everything pitch perfect for what it already has established. I can't praise it any. I can't. I can praise it to the ends of the earth. It just hits everything right on the damn nail, right on the head. I got nothing else to give you. Uh, if you've seen this film, post your comments below. I want to hear some discussion. I want every viewpoint, every little thing that you have to perceive in this film, every insight that you have. I just want to get. I just want to feel that thought process in my head to just like take this film apart and just see all the subtleties, all the magnificent qualities this film has, because I think it just did everything so perfectly. So perfectly. I could gush and gush and gush and gush. I don't know if this review is actually fully complete. I, there's no way I possibly covered everything I need to cover in this film. Just go see this film. X-Men Days of Future Past. You got a nice Memorial Day weekend here in the U.S. Go out, enjoy it. I was just blown away by this film. I just didn't, I just kicked me in the head Oh, I don't even know where the hell you can leave, go from this film because obviously it's already been announced. Next film's Apocalypse, and you can't get any bigger than Apocalypse. And definitely stay to the end, the very, very end of the credits. You get a little tease of that. You see, several millennia ago, appearance of appearance of Apocalypse and its four horsemen. It's just a little bit of scene, just one long tracking shot type of thing. If you know what you're looking at, you're going to get pretty fucking excited because Apocalypse is... It doesn't get any bigger than Apocalypse in the X-Men franchise, no way in hell. So if they're going that way, and they're do, if they could deliver anything on this level, my God, I don't know what to say. But obviously, you love X-Men. Post some comments about X-Men. Favorite characters. Mine's Gambit. I fucking hate that they've screwed up Gambit. So Taylor Kitsch did an all right job, bad material. Now they're going with Channing Tatum, and fuck that. That's all I got to say. Post it, just post, 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 post. Comments, likes, subscribes. I don't care. I, this movie just blows me away, and I just gotta cut this off before it goes on for eons and eons. <laughs> uh, a couple weeks, you'll see a review for Edge of Tomorrow because those trailers have really got me interested in the whole film. And uh, there'll probably be Transformers later on and some other stuff. And uh, we'll figure out what else is on the schedule coming up. So, Edge of Tomorrow, a couple weeks, June 6th, that comes out. Uh, Tom Cruise, sci-fi epic, directed by the guy who did Born Identity and Go, Go and various other things. I'm, I'm hooked. So, won't be as good as this film, can't be as good as this film, but maybe it'll be fun. So, adios, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to go do something else. See you later. <laughs> Bye.